pickups, props, all of it, you know. I'm, let's narrow it down a little bit. I could probably crack open some old PSDs. Yeah, let's, let's take a little trip down memory lane for a Wicked Squiggle. We can do that. Let's take a little trip. Take a little trip down memory lane. Because I've got more, I've got more finished animation in Halloween Forever stuff. We can take a peek at those, especially some of the bosses. Well, Wicked Squiggle, thank you, bud. <laughs> Tigerian, it's one that I made too. <laughs> I love the really short ones, like exclamation point PS. Yes. Uh, who do we want to look at? Big Blue, Big Skull. Let's take a look at some of these guys. Do any of these PSDs... Hang on, where's my timeline? Photoshop, you little bugger. So, this is something I still haven't figured out. Um, Wicked Squiggle, for anybody here. I still don't know why I have, like, a billion RAM, 64-bit, whatever in my Photoshop settings. So typically, there's so there's really nothing in this PSD. This is my this is my bone to pick with Photoshop right now. There's nothing in this PSD. I should be able to scrub through the animation without it turning all blurry. You guys can see that. So it's like crisp now. Hang on, I've got too many panels open. Sorry, my swatch is in the way. So it's crisp now, and then it gets blurry. It still it still functions and you can you can tell what's going on, but it's not great. It's not great loop playback. Gosh, so what do we do? Um bu -bu 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 -bu. What can we do? Yeah, so I don't know, as far as this guy is kind of just like an amorphous thing, the head skull. God, I really, I really need to figure out why Photoshop is working like garbage. Um, well, here's here's something good. So Wicked Squiggle. So like this frame here, so when like the eye pops back into existence. Let me turn on keyboard shortcut. Or is it enable? Enable timeline shortcut keys. Maybe this will work nicer. So, if. So like, check out, so his eyes pop out of his skull, and then they pop back in. So he like, boinks an eye out, and then they like, respawn here. So, the stretch on that pupil... People do like, uh, animation like, blending or smearing stuff a lot of the times, when they're trying to achieve like, a motion effect. And, um, we did that there to help it kinda... Exaggerate that so that's something you can kind of do sometimes There's probably better examples of that you can find online, too I'm Not gonna save changes there got my bird boys who else can we take a look at let's take a look at a walk cycle, too. Oh Actually frog king frog king has some cool stuff going on so frog king's got a good And all this stuff is from my other game Halloween forever frog king's got a good exaggeration when he lands on the ground. So he does like an idol. He does like a tongue effect here. The tongue effect is separate. And he like jumps up and down. And when he lands, he splats down on the ground. I just want to see what's visible. Yeah, he splats. And like slowly stands up again. But the splat is kind of slow. And like the changes are kind of subtle in there. <laughs> the little tears, I forgot about those. <laughs> but I'm trying to think. It, because like, I think because like the squash there is a little bit slow and it takes a couple extra frames. Most of my cycles are short, you know, like eight or ten frames each. But then having one, two, three, four. And then he starts getting up four frames to that kind of like splat there. He, uh... Some good gravity. 
I don't know. So when you're creating the next frame, do you go through a process like, do you know what the next frame should look like? Yeah, I, I'm trying to think. If I have it here, I wish I have it here. Actually, I've got a sample of it online. So there's like the tongue whip effect. So let's talk about this for a second. So we've got Frog King, he does like his mouth open and then the tongue flops out, like whips out and then kind of zigzags back in. So that's like the finished effect, but let me find something because I know I have a good image of that online. Measure monsters on my website. I'm just gonna have to scroll down a little bit until I can see it. Might have to dig a little bit. When was I working on Frog King? Here we go, this. So, so, Wicked Squiggle, we've got the tongue whip. So what I did before getting to that point was this. So this is sort of like what you're saying as far as like planning. I don't do this all the time, but this was helpful here um, where I was like, okay, so I had like a layer with the Frog King on it and the tongue kind of doing like the wind up. And I was like, oh, I want to just show this off as like a process thing online too. So I was like, all right, so like one, two, three, four, just to kind of set up some keyframes. So when people talk about, when people talk about keyframes in animation, what they mean are sort of like, you're setting up like the main frames in an animation sequence. And a lot of times like, you know, when you're doing like a walk cycle, it's like, you know, I'm at the top of my walk and then I'm like down at the bottom and then I'm at like the top of the walk again and you can start off with like those three frames and then those are your key frames and you know there's going to be frames in between so those are your in-betweens and you will kind of say like all right what's the timing like how much time or frames go between each keyframe in the sequence um so like when people are talking about keyframes and animation this is it's this kind of thing where you can set up like if you're if you're dealing with like a complex state or a complex animation setup you might you might just draw two frames of it and it's like you know like maybe like the wind up and then like the extreme or something like that and then you know like all right how do i get from a to b and you're filling those in with in between frames you know for as many frames as you need and you can adjust and, and kind of go from there um but also to like as you're as you're doing more animation stuff um what people will talk about a lot is uh, pose to pose or straight straight ahead animation. Let me see if I can find an example. Pose to pose animation versus straight ahead. There you go. What we have here some good Google image search stuff. Pose to pose versus straight ahead. Yeah. A lot of miscellaneous things. But look into that too, because some people like to be really diligent. I think I think also too, like what will happen is, you know, a lot of times pose to pose will look a little more rigid and technical and straight ahead will look a little more freeform and unplanned, but also sometimes less technical. So it all, it all really depends on what you're trying to go for. And that was a good education moment. I actually want to take a little...